Hi everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here, speaking to you from the Caesar Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. Um, I'm going to do a tarot, uh, political tarot, some political tarot. Uh, I've been trying to do it every week, and uh, last week I had a funeral to go to, so I I couldn't I couldn't do that. Uh, but I did do a nine nine portal reading. If you want to check that one out, uh, it's a short <laughs> short reading. Um, and I also did an in the news segment uh, about Prince Charles, which was fun and uh, and happy to share it with you. So you want to check that out. All right, let's take a look. Now, um, I thought we would just go to uh, go go look at the hard stuff first, and um, and I want to look at Ukraine and. Uh, and Russia. So the conflict, um, and what's ahead um, for uh, the Ukraine. Now, this is certainly an army that is um, brave, better equipped now than it had been. So now it has the equipment it needs to fight back. I mean, up to this point, they were just, um, they were just drawing the line. Like all they could do was resist and draw the line. And of course that line is, uh, excuse me, sorry about that, is littered in bodies and suffering. And that is the nature of war. Hold on one second, guys. I'm so sorry about that. I had to, There we go. <laughs> I sit in this chair because it's probably got the best acoustics and the best light. Um, I did have um, another spot I like to work with, but it's sort of like a, a sound tunnel. So it sounds like place is haunted through most of the reading. So I'm back here in this chair, but it is, isn't the most comfortable for my back. So um, I have to like set myself in the chair and like put the pillow in the right spot and then it's okay. So I wanna talk about the Ukraine. I'm gonna use the talk deck um, and see, see what, see what comes up. And my talk deck is very old and very stiff. I did uh, use it a lot. I actually, this deck actually disappeared for a long time for me, um, maybe 10 years, I couldn't find it. I knew in the general vicinity where it was, but I could actually never get back there to, to go grab it, which I think you said a lot about my life at the time. There was a lot of chaos to get through, boy, let me tell you. Um, and so I feel like the top deck is one of those decks that um, I wouldn't call it a weapon, but I call it when you really want to know the bottom line, I think you go to the top deck. And so let's really look at the bottom line of the Ukraine uh, situation, the bottom line. Okay, almost these, because they're so stiff, I can't shuffle them like the normal way. So it takes a little bit longer. I wanna make sure I get a good, there we go, I'm getting there. Okay. <laughs> All right, um, let's cut the cards. All right, let's see, Ukraine. Yeah. Um, this is, um, there's a certain amount of feeling of uh, Ukraine as the, is the sacrifice, right? Sacrificial lamb of maybe democracy. Um, like the thing where it's happening, right? I think actually what's happening here at the hanged man here, is that this situation was put upon the Ukraine. It wasn't a choice. They didn't choose 
to be invaded. And so when you're invaded, you have to sort of just stop what you're doing and resist the invasion and put a line up and say, you can't push us anymore. And being in that position, you know, not being in the position of power has given them a perspective that the powerful don't have because they don't need to have it. And so the underdog, you know, usually has the advantage because they have momentum, I think, on their side because they're striving, right? So because of that, because this is a, a, a nation that has sort of been under the anvil of Russia, it's, you know, for millennia, it understands, um, it under, I think it understands the weakness in those who feel like they have the control. And so I think they use that to their advantage. And of course, the, the, what the advantage is, is community. Community working together, everybody united in, in a single purpose, a hard purpose that the whole world is now united in as well. I mean, it's, it's, a, um, it's, it's, it's a thing to behold. It's a thing to behold and to feel and to uh, want to help your neighbor uh, against the bully, against the bully. And this is the energy that we're all working with. You know, Chiron is in Aries. So this is the energy we're going to be working with anyway. But of course, the Ukraine is, is, the, is the battle line. And so they become the sacrifice in a way. Um, but it also gives us the, the, um, I was just thinking how uh, in the sky we have Saturn squaring Uranus and how in, in Russia, there's the Saturn, right? The, the restrictions, you can't say this, you can't say the truth, you can't think this way, you have to think that way. Um, and then in the United States, it's like Uranus, where we are uh, breaking free from uh, a sense of not being, you know, like this, this Uranian um, reemergence of, um, you know, white supremacy and fascism. And I think like any place, you know, the, the country has to exercise that stuff. And that's, I think what's happening. I think it's being exercised. It's, it's like all of us with the South Node transiting through um, Scorpio. This is our call to let go of our stuff. Just let it go. All those, you know, you know, just stop stop and, and um, ultimately let's help each other. Let's believe in each other. And that's, and that's also part of the power that the Ukraine has. And the Ukraine is, um, is guarded over by Archangel Michael. So, <laughs> I mean, he is, you know, he holds the sort of of light, the sort of truth and justice, right? Michael's sword. Michael is often depicted as having a sword in one hand and um, and scales in the other. We actually have one in our garden. I should take a picture of that and share it. <laughs> I will. Um, so, it's a powerful place. I mean, that's where Chernobyl happened. They have all that nuclear, you know, power. I'm sure Russia would like that too. I mean, they want to be, I guess, the energy czars. 
So, or maybe it's not, you know, whatever, Putin, it's not really Russia. It's not Russia's war, it's Putin's war. It was his decision to invade his fellow, his cousins. It's like, it's like killing somebody in your own family, you know? I don't know. Let's see what's crossing the Ukraine. So all of that, everything I just said, which was a lot, sorry, um, is that the Ukraine has a, has a, a perspective that they need, to, they need to depend on cosmic forces. The hanged man can't take an action, but can open up to spirit. And that's what happened. That's what happened. So it has, it has, it is, it is where all the light was shining for a time. You know? And now we have the light shining on more so on what the, the tumult within our own country here in America. So we don't hear as much, but we still support it. You know, our government still supports it. Is it a proxy war of some sort? No, I don't think so because uh, Russia instigated it. Hopefully that'll stop that, sorry. <laughs> it's an old fashioned phone, so you can't do anything fancy with it like you can with your phone phone that, that most of us have. What's challenging it, um, decisions, decisions are being made. Because they're winning now, decisions are being made on how to move forward. That is, that is lovers, the lovers part is the Gemini part. So there's all this Gemini energy and um, Mars is in Gemini right now, but Mars is also gonna be going retrograde in Gemini. And that happens um, on the United States Mars. So we have a Mars return with three conjunctions. Um, but that Mars retrograde makes us question, how are we asserting ourselves? We question that, which is, you know, I, I think it's a question that needs to be asked. So I think the challenge for the Ukraine is that their fate really isn't in their hands. It's in the hands of the people who are helping them and the people who are hurting them. So to a certain extent, I guess it is kind of a proxy war. It's not something that as far as I know, they asked for. Uh, we don't always know everything that happens, but I do have a real sense that the Ukraine is a beacon of light. It does have that energy of light. And um, So the challenge is that the decisions really aren't in their own hands. And we have underneath it all Mars and Aries. This is the two of, two of wands called dominion. So they want self, um, they don't wanna be a pawn in a larger war. They want their freedom and they want the rights to themselves. Who doesn't want that? That's happening everywhere. The rights to yourself. I'm gay, or, or I'm a I'm, I'm a he she. I don't know. Like the, the thing, people declaring that this is what they want to be called, and people getting mad at it. You know, what does it matter what somebody wants to call themselves, really? You know, I could call myself purple. Maybe people wouldn't agree with me. <laughs> I can still call myself purple. And what right do you have to tell me that I can't define myself? Right? And that self actually is the self that's, you know, I feel, well, I feel like that self is the self that's deep within us, the self that's the higher self, the side, the self where we remember um, how beautiful it is when we expand into love.
this tells me, this Dominion card with Mars and Aries at the root of this tells me that while they're in a situation where they don't have a lot of power, they do want to make the decisions. The decisions need to be made by them. And I think that's what the United States always said when they decide what they want to do, you know, we'll help them or, or you know, it was always going to be, um, it wasn't like the United States were telling them what to do. They were, you know what I'm saying? They, they came in afterwards after this aggression. So um, they have, they have the, uh, at the root is their own effort and their own effort as soldiers. In the past, we have the Prince of Discs. This is the King of Discs. These are the oligarchs. These are the oligarchs in the past. There was a lot of, um, you know, bribery and just watch the, watch the show that he did. Zelensky's uh, show. Um, the Ukrainian show it was on Netflix. I think you might still be able to watch it on Netflix. Um, it was really a, a political commentary on the government and how, you know, all these sort of patriarchal, oligarchal, own everything, I'm the king and you're my serf kind of guys, um, you know, were, were taken from the regular people. I mean, Zelensky is an, heir, is an Aquarius. We're in the age of Aquarius, guys. He is a beacon or an avatar for that. And a lot of what he inspired in people was a sense that we're all in this together and that together we can overcome a world power. And I'm sure when he was in Bucha seeing what had happened, he was second guessing his decision to think that they could, but now that they, ha now they have to. And uh, yeah, we have the seven of cups in the sky. This is a little concerning. There's a certain illusionary quality um, to this card, it is Venus. It is a Venus card. It's connected to Netzach in the in the tree, in the tree of life, um, which can be our desires. Uh, not all of them good for us. Venus and Scorpio can 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 be a little bit that way, desirous of of uh, things sometimes that aren't really that 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 keep your energy heavy that keep you attached to um, keep you attached to things that prevent you from having love or accepting love in your life so i think this in the sky means that while things are looking, we just have to look at what we're, what we're being shown on the media and, and the like um, as um, knowing that there's a sheen of unreality around it. It's not exactly what's happening, uh, but I think it is happening. In the immediate future, we have the moon. So I feel like this, um, this victory is gonna cost them dearly, maybe somewhere else in the Ukraine. Um, Russia, while it, you know, down, um, because it was just the soldiers that they left behind, the, the, the commanders just left the soldiers there. And then they realized that Holy Toledo, what, you know, they didn't even tell us. And uh, so, so there's a real, uh, there seems to be like a real uh, rotten uh, chain of command, I think in Russia is rotting away. 
That's what it feels like to me. But this is the Ukraine and that means that there's more, unfortunately, more pain to come, more suffering to come, but it, it is, it is um, there are small victories. There will be, they will continue, I think. Um, but it, this is immediate. So this is immediate future. This is not the future. This is not the end. So how it's seen is we see that there's success, right? And this it's interesting, this card looks like like a shield, right? With light coming out of it. I don't know if, if it looks like that from your perspective. This is the shield of light, right? This is the shield of light. And um, that's how people see it. And people see it as going to be successful. The war in the Ukraine going to be successful. The domestic situation is abundant. This is the, the love and, and uh, the good feeling from people around the world that you know you can fight back and you can overcome and you can and and people are here to help you and so we see that in the ukraine as these soldiers come back in and these people are just um you know can't believe their luck that the Russians aren't there anymore. But these are like small communities that that town that they're showing you that they're they're um, like liberating, I guess. Or like there's like 400 people there. It's not a big place. But um, you know, these are the people that have been like having to hobble down because they're not in a big city. They, you know, most of them most of them, I don't think, have that much money because they're, it's rural, and you know, to part of what they do is live off the land. So, it you know, it's just it's beautiful, and that and that energy of abundance and love and overflowing and friendship. This is friendship. Um, it's like if you're a good friend and you're good to somebody, you get rewarded instead of being good to somebody. And then they say, no, you, you don't have enough of the killer instinct, so you got to get out of here. It's like we're valuing different things now. We're valuing different things. We're valuing the feminine hopes and fears that um, I think this is the fear of retaliation. They know that they're, if you're going to punch Rush in the nose, you're probably going to pound something else. So they're probably scared of that. There we go. Success. Suck. Success. Jupiter. Jupiter. Jupiter has something to do with the success. Well, Jupiter is in Aries. And so, uh, but it's moving backwards. So, and then it's going to go into Pisces for a little while and then it goes back into Aries. So we're still not done with Jupiter and Pisces. And that Jupiter and Pisces is a very powerful healing bomb, opening up to great healing. And I think that's gonna be an important time. I feel like um, once Mars goes direct and uh, in this out of Gemini sort of moves on, um, maybe into Taurus again, where it can, um, oh, it won't be Taurus, it'll be Cancer, right? Mars will be in Cancer. Sorry, I was going backwards. Um, Mars and Cancer is fighting for your, for your land. It's, it's, it's fighting for families. It's fighting for, uh, you're putting your energy in domestic, domestic needs so i think that there's going to be a shift i feel like the end of this year i think with the midterms with the situation in the ukraine um and then pluto is going to go into uh, aquarius next year for just a little bit and uh, we're going to get a taste of the future so we create the future with the uh with the uh, the energy of the present moment. So the Ukraine has to show its 
greatest qualities, right? The people of the Ukraine, their, their courage, their love for one another, their love for their country, um, the love of their land, of their, of their, of their separate identity, for their right to be. I mean, they were in the, uh, they were in the Soviet Union. They didn't, they weren't really, a, they weren't a country. They didn't have their own identity um, at that time. And, and that's, I think, something that has been going on for centuries. I don't know the history, unfortunately. <laughs> I don't really have the time to learn it, but. All right, let's see what's underneath. Yeah, sorrow heartbreak, tears. Peace. Underneath it. And uh, the tower. This is illumination, the tower illuminates. And sometimes it needs to knock a few things down to illuminate. And I think that is, uh, in a way, um, bringing in that tower energy, which is Uranus, by the way. Um, and it's and this quad is connected with Mars. So I feel as though we need to open up to the light. We need to be our best people in whatever way we can be. The Ukraine is showing us, um, you know, in a way, but we're all going through it on some level. So we're all having to um, let go of sometimes things we still wanna keep in order for us to sort of keep the light on, keep the light on. And so we all have to be our best. And you know, that, that being your best is not um, based on what somebody else thinks you should do. It's what you think in your own heart. Be true to your, being true to yourself, you know? Accepting yourself. When, you, when you're true to yourself, you accept who you are. And when you accept who you are, then what other people think of you is, is immaterial to a certain extent. I mean, we all want to be liked. It's not that, you know, you're, 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 you're um, sort of drawing in, you know, be against the world, but I don't know. I think that, um, I think we're being, um, these are powerful cards. I feel as though this is a time of awakening for us and just deciding what world we want to live in. What do we want our world to look like? And I don't think we want it to look like it looks now. And so I think we need to imagine, use our imaginations and imagine, I mean, picture in your mind's eye, what would be your ultimate situation? What would your world look like? What kind of place would you live in? What kind of work would you do? What kind of things would, would, you know, what do you want to see? And then be logical about the decisions that you make, right? Balance that imagining with reason, you know? And some of that means you have to let go of things that maybe you didn't want to let go of, you kind of wanted to hang on. But sometimes you have to sort of slenderize yourself to get moving and to get going. Sometimes you need to be mobile.
So I think I'm going to stop. This, this is always happens. I start a reading and then I go places and that's the place we went. Um, I do think that uh, we're going to see success in the Ukraine, real success. Will they get all their land back? They might just get all their land back. Um, and then maybe have, um, you know, there might be people in the Ukraine that do want to go to Russia. I mean, they, I can't imagine they wouldn't allow people who wanted to leave to leave. Then there's going to be a lot of people probably coming from Russia eventually going towards the Ukraine because there'll be a lot of building. They're going to be rebuilding the Ukraine. They have to do all, you know, there's going to be work. And so they're going to go in that direction. Yeah. I think what the Ukraine is teaching us is that we need to draw the line and we need to stop the bullying. And we have to realize that that also applies to us. Otherwise, you know, we have to start, we have to stop fighting and we have to start working together. We have to start uniting. Imagine the world we would have if we stopped spending all our money on killing and drawing lines and I have it and you don't and just started helping one another. Imagine the wisdom we could have. There's so much, so much that creative ability, great ideas, it would be like the world would be colored again. You know, when things are in this contracted state, in this fascistic, sort of fascistic uh, energy that seems to be, you know, getting thrown around. It's like everything is, is gray and black and white and stark and um, it, we need to like move into, and that's the line and the line needs to be black and white. You need to know where you can't go. You have to draw a line has to be drawn, but we don't have to live on the line. We can move away from the line and, and move back into more colorful, fuller um, life. And we can only do that if we do it together. We're not gonna be able to do that otherwise. I mean, you can make your own enclave, but you know, it has to be, I think it starts within ourselves by accepting. It's like when you accept yourself, it's like you're, you're watering the garden of your soul. And when you water the garden of your soul, you get to grow things from your soul. And you get to to really um, to really be happy and, and allow yourself and allow yourself the joy, reconnecting with the joy in your life. I mean, that is absolutely positively necessary at this time. Doing what you love and loving what you do is like as important as a Kevlar belt, uh, vests at this time. So, we're moving in the right direction. The light is shining, the love is growing, the connections are being made. 
the old systems are dying away. We are not going into fascism. It won't happen. It won't happen. We could go into some different kinds of um, issue. Pluto in, in Aquarius will show us the shadow side of technology, the shadow side of, you know, all is one kind of feeling, the losing maybe of a sense of being able to be creative. But uh, we'll work with it when, you know, it's, we're not, we can't judge tomorrow. We can't judge tomorrow by what we're experiencing now. Um, because if we stay in the present moment, you're in the middle of all of that. And that is the most creative place. So what I would suggest through this reading, I guess, about the Ukraine, because this is part of the message from the Ukraine, I think, um, is, you know, to kind of maybe imagine your best life, take, take care of the tasks in front of you. Um, and continue on, you know, continue on to continue on what you have to do, what needs to be done. What life do you want to see, right? What kind of world do you want to have? I always envision like, you know, cities, but like, but from these like city buildings, like green spaces and, you know, flowers coming down and, you know, how do we live in, in harmony with nature in places where there isn't a lot of nature and then how do we keep what nature we do have and still have safe so that we can have a balance of that? An opportunity to sort of bring heaven to earth in a way. Or Garden of Eden. We were thrown out, right? We were thrown out because what? We chose to have desires. but it's always been there, it's, it's been, always been there. When they threw out the feminine in the Garden of Eden myth, blaming Eve, um, they, um, they brought us to this brink and we have to step back from that and we have to step into love. We need to be shining a lot of light, guys, a lot of light. I know that Cash Peters is talking about it. Lena is talking about it. Um, For those of us who maybe have some reach to shine our light so bright. But I think that you have to be the light to do it. You know, like you have to, you have to be the light. You have to, it has to embody you. It's in there, but you, you have to access it through, through, um, your heart, that's our most powerful chakra. It's, it's the, do the heart math guys, right? It, it res the heart has to, re the, the brain has to resonate with the heart, not the, not the, the brain is just a receiver. It's like a tuner, like on your thing. It's like, mm -hmm. and when you meditate and when you eat the right foods and when you nourish your brain in the ways you need to nourish your brain, expand your consciousness, um, you know, you become more accustomed to the to the new energies that we're we're experiencing. 
So how do you find that? You find it within your own heart. That's your, that's your most powerful place. So you have to feel the joy. You have to feel the love. You have to open up to it. You know, people who do terrible things are so fearful that they feel that they have to like annihilate the other person in order to be safe. Um, it's kind of a big ego. Um, it's, it's like the ego getting uh, eaten up by, um, by the soul or getting absorbed back into the soul. It's like the ego is coming back home to its mother or its, its origin. And, and the ego is afraid that it's gonna lose itself and then it's, it's gonna just not be there, but it be actually becomes greater because you become more connected to more parts of yourself. Shine your light. I guess that's what I want to say. The Ukraine is showing us how, how to shine your light. The Ukraine is showing us how so that we can change our future, right? Change our future. You know, Jupiter in, in Aries is a, a new future. Right, it's a new, it's, it's it's a new cycle, but it has to go back into Pisces because there's one more thing that has to has to like be understood, perhaps for us to learn. That's what I see, guys. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That went to places I did not expect. Please like and subscribe. Check out my video on um, King Charles in the news, King Charles III. I look at his astrology and his numerology and Kabbalah. I think it's a good one. You can check that out. And uh, I'll get more political stuff done, I promise. And um, yeah, things are things are going in the right direction, right, guys? Shine your light and see what happens. It's gonna get awful bright. And then you're gonna get to see what corners of your life that you need to do the deep clean or the dusting. So things are gonna things are gonna be seen. And you and we need to just endeavor to imagine the life we want and take the steps in whatever little ways we can to get there. All right, guys, much love everyone. Namaste.